Hello everyone, uh, so for this last video of this uh, image segmentation uh, module uh, we're going to be looking at what's generally the uh, next step after segmenting uh, an, an image uh, which is uh, object labeling and uh, feature extraction. Um, so uh, once we've identified uh, the object of interest in an image, it's trying to look at what we can do uh, with those uh, regions of interest and how can we um, gather some more information about them for uh, afterwards classification or other um, tasks. So let's uh, go here to the uh, notebook. Um, so what I've done here is just uh, loaded the same image as in the previous video, so the image with uh, uh, loads of uh, cells uh, that are stained uh, um, with uh, a very uh, a dark stain for the, for the nuclei. And uh, what I've done is I've extracted, so I've saved uh, the, 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 the mask that we computed um, uh, by simply uh, thresholding on the uh, uh, H channel from the HED color space. So this is the uh, the segmentation mask where we already have uh, uh, most of the objects uh, overlapping and uh, connected. Um, and now uh, what what we can do is we can try to um, to to use the uh, connectivity of those uh, of this uh, within this mask, so the connectivity of the pixels in this mask, to uh, try a first uh, separation of the object. So what we want to do here is just to to have uh, a new um, a new mask where instead of just being binary mask, we want to have one uh, label for each uh, connected object of the uh, image. And we have um, a, um, a method uh, within scikit-image that does that, so it does do that, sorry, uh, called a label. And the idea is that if we call a label um, with a binary mask, uh, it will go through the, um, through the, through the, 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 the mask and every pixel that belongs to a connected object will be given the same label uh, and every pixel that belongs to separate objects will have separate labels. So if we look at that uh, here, um, I can go to the kind of same uh, region uh, over there. It will not be very visible, but you can see probably in a better in, a, in another region here. So every um, pixel here in this region has the label 141, and when this uh, region is 155. So we have different uh, labels for every uh, region. So now what can we uh, do with this information? Well, this allows us basically to, um, to, to, to select um, whichever object we want in the image and to gather specific information about that object. So for instance, if I uh, here uh, show just a binary mask for selectively one object, the object with the label uh, 100 for instance, I will only keep the pixels that belong to that specific object. And so I can, uh, in a way, address inside the image every different uh, object that I, that I have. And I can see that some of them will be a very large uh, object with lots of connected cells, while some will be um, small, probably isolated uh, cells. Um, another thing that we can uh, work on here is the connectivity of our labels. So this basically uh, just um, determines whether we consider the two pixels that are connected by the diagonal uh, counts as connected or not. So with the connectivity equal one, uh, it does. And you can see here that uh, if, I, um, if I use connectivity uh, with, the, um, with the, the diagonals, I found 357 uh, different objects in the, in the image. If I use a, sorry, connectivity of, so the, sorry, it's the reverse. So connectivity of one uh, means that uh, we are not taking the diagonal. Uh, connectivity of one, we are not taking the, di the, the, the diagonal uh, as connected. And so we have 357 different uh, connected uh, objects. If I put connectivity equals two, uh, that means that I take the diagonal into account. So I consider that um, if two pixels are connected through the diagonal, uh, they are part of the same object. And so by uh, increasing this, uh, this connectivity, 
I, uh, I of course find fewer objects as uh, some of them will have been merged together because they touch on the uh, corner. So uh, depending on, on what we know about the objects, one might be uh, better or not uh, than the other. So let's keep um, one with the diagonal for now. And so here we have 352 um, separate uh, objects that we found. And now that we can address them um, individually, we can try to, uh, to look at, uh, at the information of individual uh, objects. So for instance, one thing that we could do here is try to look at what the sizes of these, uh, of these different objects are. And so I can go through every uh, label that I have in my uh, label image. So label zero is reserved for the background. So I will start from label one until the uh, last label uh, in my image. So I should be doing uh, plus one here because range is exclusive for the, for the last one. Um, and for each of these labels, I will look at the number of pixels so I will, I will select all the pixels that, are, that have this label in, in my label image. Uh, some uh, this, this, uh, some the, the pixels in, in this resulting mask, so it will be one for every pixel within the label. So with uh, the sum here, I have the number of pixels that are part of the uh, given uh, objects. And I put all of that in an array. Um, so in the, in, sorry, in the first in the Python list that I convert into uh, an, an array. And uh, I can uh, use Batplotlib to, uh, to, to compute the histogram of the uh, object sizes within my image. So this uh, gives me a bit of information about the kind of, of object that I have. You can see that I have a, a lots of objects, so at least 160, uh, which have uh, um, uh, uh, an area of less than around 500 uh, pixels. Um, and that I, but I, that I do have uh, objects that are uh, very large, up to 40,000 uh, pixels. So what I can do with that information is I can try to think, okay, what does that mean? Well, basically, where is, uh, could I use that uh, to, to find sort of a threshold uh, to, to, to find the, the, the difference between the uh, isolated cells that were correctly identified and the cells that are part of a cluster that I would need to further uh, divide. And so I can, for instance, see, okay, let's, let's have a look at this first, uh, this first uh, peak here at around 500. Um, what happens if I create a new uh, label image here where I only keep the uh, labels where the area is under uh, 500? And so if I um, try to do that, uh, I will see that I do seem to, uh, to, to, to keep mostly the, um, the isolated uh, cells. So I have some that are still probably here, um, two cells, but I have removed most of the uh, large uh, clusters. Uh, and I can, of course, look at what happens if I start uh, changing that uh, that threshold, so if I take something a bit uh, bigger, I see that I, what I've added seem to be mostly uh, clusters and not isolated cells. So this threshold of around uh, 500 might seem to be um, a, a relatively good idea. Um, so this gives us here uh, a kind of information about the, uh, the, the size of, uh, of a normal um, nuclei uh, so for normal cell, sorry, in the, in the, in the image. And uh, what we could do now is if what we wanted was to get a rough estimation of the number of cells in the uh, entire image here, well, we could have a very rough approximation by just dividing the uh, number of pixels that we found in our original mask by the size of one regular uh, cell in the, um, in the, in, in the mask, and this would give us uh, around 1,400 uh, cells in the image as a rough estimation, which is relatively close to what we found at the end of the last uh, last lab, so three, um, it was 1,352. So this is a really rough estimation, of course, and depending on uh, what threshold uh, we put uh, exactly, so on what we consider to be the normal size of, of a um, of, of a cell, we get very different, uh, different, different results. So this is not a good way of having a precise count, but just to have an order of magnitude of how many cells we are looking at, 
uh, this is already uh, interesting. If you want to, uh, to do things that are a bit uh, more, more complex and to get a bit uh, more interesting features, uh, one thing that you can do is use the region props uh, method from uh, scikit image. And region props, what it will do it is that it will go through every um, label in, um, in my image. And for each of those labels, it will compute uh, a series of features um, for that, uh, for, 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 for that uh, specific uh, region. And so I can have, um, you can find in the, in the region props documentation the list of all those features. Uh, but basically, they will be, there will be the, the area. Uh, the object area, but also uh, information about the morphology of the object, like the solidity. So the solidity will be um, the area of the object, um, the, 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 the ratio between the area of the object and the uh, area of the uh, convex hull of the object. So the convex hull is the so smallest convex polygon uh, that we can uh, make that, uh, that, that, uh, that we can make around the object. So basically, if an object is concave, um, it is very concave, it will be have a very low solidity. An object that is, um, that is uh, mostly convex will have a solidity close to uh, one. Um, Another thing you can look is the major and minor axis. So this is uh, if we take the, an, an ellipse that goes um, that, that has the same uh, moments as the as the object, and we take the major and the minor um, axis of these uh, of this ellipse, uh, and we take the ratio between them. Uh, this will give us an idea of how uh, elongated uh, or not the uh, object uh, is. So uh, if we have a um, something that is very close to a circle that would have um, a value very uh, close to, to one for this ratio. Uh, we can look also at the object area. There are, there are tons of other uh, properties that we can, that we can use. Um, but let's start with, with this one. And we can um, very simply now um, just plot uh, those, uh, those, those features to have a look at uh, what we have um, in terms of the features of our object here. And so this is... Uh, uh, for the first uh, one here, I've just plotted the first two dimensions, so the solidity and uh, the ratio between major and minor axis uh, length. And what I can see here is that I seem to have a relatively uh, dense cluster um, uh, over here with many uh, outliers. And this is a, a relatively um, common thing to, to look for in, in feature space, is trying to, to find if there seems to be a, a sort of, of structure uh, that we can find the data that would tell us what, what is uh, a normal data point and what is an, uh, an abnormal data point that we might uh, need to, to, to review um, afterwards. So this uh, notion of, of looking at things in feature space is really important afterwards, especially in, the, in classification uh, problems and in the machine learning and in uh, uh, lots of um, further uh, tasks in computer vision. Um, and the idea is that we, is always that we want to find uh, lots of features that are useful for what we are trying to do. Um, and then we can afterwards consider each object to be a distinct point in feature space. And we can look afterwards af at the, the shape of our um, point cloud uh, in feature space. So of course, as soon as we get so here we can look at it in two dimensions. We can look by adding the area uh, at the same, um, the same thing in three dimensions. Once we add more features, we have to rely on statistical uh, tools um, to, uh, to give us information about the, the, the data, because visualization, of course, will be a lot more uh, difficult. Um, but so if we look now at our point cloud in, in 3D, we can still see uh, this uh, fairly large um, cluster. Um, and we can see that we have, so here in the, 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 the regions here with, uh, with a very large area are clearly um, uh, clusters, um, uh, sorry, are clearly um, uh, so clusters of uh, cells, so many different cells uh, put together. Um, and but even for the, for, the, for the regions with a lower, um, with a lower uh, area, uh, we, can we can here mix uh, a, a distinction between the regions also which have a, a high enough or low uh, soli solidity um, or uh, the ratio between major and minor length, uh, which uh, here 
is in interesting because uh, because of prior knowledge that you might have on the on the um, on the objects you are looking at. So we are looking at cells which typically will be uh, relatively um, disc shaped, and so we expect that isolated cells that were correctly segmented uh, should have a um, a solidity um, and a, a major minor ratio that are uh, relatively close to, uh, to to one. So we expect this cluster and this cluster here to be uh, the uh, kind of uh, regular uh, cells. And so what you can do to kind of test this uh, intuition is to um, to take now um, the these informations and say okay we we'll look at a minimum solidity of 0 0.9 that would put us over here a maximum um, uh, major minor uh, ratio of around uh, 175 and a uh, maximum area of 500 and here what i'm doing is um, selecting the id of the labels uh, where the features correspond to those uh, criteria so i look at the f yeah, i'm creating a mask in my feature list uh, for um, which will be true everywhere the um, the first feature so the solidity is above the minimum solidity the same for um, the um, the major minor axis ratio the same for the area and if i multiply all those binary masks uh, it will be equal to true everywhere all three uh, conditions are true and false everywhere else and so this allows me to take the um, labels uh, of the uh, small objects, the labels of the large objects, and then I can create two um, label images, one with only the small isolated cells, which are probably already correctly um, uh, segmented, and I have one here with uh, all the uh, um, all, the, all the, the cell clusters which, uh, which are not correctly isolated. Um, and so what I could do now with this information is uh, do the same um, uh, watershed and distance transform based segmentation that uh, we have done in a previous uh, video, but only apply it to the uh, clusters of cells. So we can leave the cells that we think are already correctly uh, segmented alone and only do the, um, the, the watershed on the cells that uh, that, that we think uh, should be further divided. And this will allow us to, to avoid uh, over-segmenting in places where, um, where, where, where the, the job was already done uh, correctly. And so here I'm just um, doing the same um, algorithm as uh, in the previous video, but I'm using as a mask, uh, just a mask based on the uh, large, um, on the large uh, objects. Um, and I'm computing here the, ma the uh, so for the markers uh, based on the uh, local um, maximum on the of the distance transform. And here I can see that now my markers are in all of the uh, are disseminated in all of the cell clusters, but we, I don't have any marker left in the isolated cells that o have already been correctly identified. Um, now I can uh, again do the gradient. Um, and the uh, so recompute here the markers, but um, so compute the, uh, the, the, the 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 gradients and uh, the watershed um, inside uh, the, the the these uh, these these clusters of cell. And um, now this gives me uh, so here I still have my 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 labels for the small objects, and now with the watershed I have my new my new labels for the large objects, which now have been given uh, separate labels for the uh, different uh, for the different uh, cells. Uh, the only thing that remains is to uh, merge those two um, those two together. Um, and what I will uh, simply do is first I will relabel uh, this image because here I know that all the objects I have are already uh, disconnected, so I can simply um, apply a threshold and relabel the image so that I can make sure that it goes from 1, 2, uh, 3, 4, etc. until the, the, the last object I have here and I don't have gaps uh, in my uh, labels. Uh, and then I will take the maximum value, so the maximum label for the small objects, and I will start counting 
in the large uh, labels, I will start counting from this uh, maximum value. So the first, the first labels will be for the uh, small uh, object that detected here, and the uh, labels afterwards will be for all the objects that we've added uh, with the watershed. Um, and I will add, uh, so in my uh, merge, I will first put just the, the small labels, and then for everywhere that we uh, are not in the background in the, in the watershed image, uh, I'm uh, copying the new uh, labels. So this gives me uh, the new uh, full um, label image, where I can see that I have the small labels for the uh, isolated uh, cells, and then I have larger labels for the, the cells that were separated by the watershed, and the uh, final uh, segmentation will be um, so we'll um, tend to, to leave the, um, the cells that were already isolated uh, kind of more, uh, more alone, so I don't have any risk of uh, separating the cells that were already correctly uh, segmented, but I still have the, um, the separation, uh, which in this case here is again uh, too, too large, uh, um, so too, 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 too segmented, uh, in the, the, so I probably have too many, too many cells uh, that were found here, but it, again it's the first uh, kind of approximation, uh, it's already uh, pretty decent. And I can see that now I have 1,320. So the difference here between the, 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 this one, I can see that basically uh, there are probably around 30 um, uh, cells that here were, uh, were, were split in uh, several different cells, uh, even though they were already um, isolated and correctly segmented, and which here we've managed to keep. Um, and of course, I can um, recompute uh, the um, the feature space for the for for for, for the new uh, object that I have uh, here, and I can see that um, now everything is much more uh, concentrated, uh, which is in this case a relatively good sign because um, the more we have outliers in this cluster, the more it's likely that we have objects that are just uh, badly segmented because they they should be relatively uh, homogeneous in their uh, morphology, uh, but we do expect some variation in the morphology depending on the, on the, t the, the type of the cell and depending on how so uh, close and much together they, 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 they are. Um, and we could still use this information to try to, to differentiate different types of cells, in this case, uh, to, to try to look more deeply into the morphology. Uh, but that's really uh, what's generally done after, um, after segmentation, so this goes uh, beyond the, the scope of these videos here, uh, where we uh, start trying to, um, to use this, uh, this information to, uh, to train uh, classifiers, uh, to, uh, to train uh, models to, uh, to recognize different uh, types of uh, of objects, um, or to compute statistics about the object present uh, in, in, an, in an image. Um, but that's it for this video, and that's it uh, for this uh, video series, uh, and thank you for watching.